from Georgia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consider. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, it was 224 years ago that the Constitutional Convention was wrapping up that summer of 1787. Ben Franklin walked out of the front door, and a woman asked him, what did you create? And he famously responded, a republic, if you can keep it. That's what the debate is about here today, Mr. Speaker, our republic, and can we keep it? Mr. Speaker, the last time we debated a balanced budget amendment was back in 1995, 16 years ago. And at that time, now uh, Minority Leader Steny Hoyer said this, this country confronts a critical threat caused by the continuation of large annual deficits. I'm absolutely convinced that the long-term consequences of refusing to come to grips with the necessity to balance our budget will be catastrophic. And those who will pay the highest price for our fiscal responsibility, should we fail, will be those least able to protect themselves and the children of today and the generations of tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, this debate is about those who are least able to protect themselves, and this is about the vision that we have chosen for ourselves as Americans. 223 years ago, Mr. Speaker, in a letter written in November, Thomas Jefferson said this, I wish it were possible to obtain a single amendment to our Constitution. I would be willing to depend on that alone for the reduction of the administration of our government to the genuine principles of its Constitution. I mean an additional article taking from government the power of borrowing. Our founding fathers, 223 years ago, folks talk about a bill being rushed to the floor, Mr. Speaker. This is a debate that has been going on since the founding of our nation. Since the founding of our nation. We did, we had this discussion in uh, in 1995, we had this discussion in, in 1994. Every Congress for the 10 years between 1985 and 1995, we discussed a balanced budget. Apparently, there was no need to discuss any longer, and look where we are. I was down in Chinatown the other day, Mr. Speaker, where conveniently enough, our United States debt auctions were held right downtown in Chinatown. We sold $36 billion of debt in Chinatown the day I was down there at 0.0005% interest. But hear this. I'll close as I open, Mr. Speaker. From our friends at S&P, we view an inability to timely agree and credibly implement medium-term fiscal consolidation policy as inconsistent with a AAA sovereign rating. Mr. Speaker, this isn't about raising the debt limit. This is about preserving the republic. Go ahead and raise the debt limit. Moody says that's not enough. Go ahead and raise the debt limit. S&P says that's not going to get you anywhere. Inconsistent with a AAA rating is the borrowing and spending that this Congress has brought to the House. Now, we talk about rushing a bill to the House floor, Mr. Speaker. I'll say this, and some of my Democratic colleagues have said it, and I associate myself with their comments. This reflects the priorities of this House. What we're working on today is exactly what we were working on when we worked on H.R. 1 in February, one of the most uh, open and, and uh, uh, brilliant moments uh, in this House's uh, history in terms of debate. Well, the priorities we're setting today, the same priorities we were setting when we had that very open budget uh, debate earlier uh, this year in April, where we brought every budget to the House floor and said, what can we agree on as a House? And you know what we agreed on, Mr. Speaker? We agreed on the priorities that are set forth in cut, cap, and balance. Now, there's been a lot of talk about who's willing to compromise. Mr. Speaker, I can't find a single colleague on this side of the aisle that's enthusiastic about raising the debt limit, not one. But folks are willing to do it if we can preserve the republic for our children and our grandchildren, which we can do with cut, cap, and balance. Mr. Speaker, there's all this talk in Washington about default on the national debt. That's a serious conversation. It's a serious conversation. I want to talk about defaulting on the promises of our founders. I want to talk about defaulting on our republic, Mr. Speaker. One wish Thomas Jefferson had, one wish, if it were possible to obtain a single amendment to our Constitution, it would be an additional article taking from government the power of borrowing. 
I understand, Mr. Speaker, that there's a lot of reluctance to do that. There are lots of great things that folks have priorities that they would like to spend on. This isn't about those spending priorities. We'll still have that conversation. H.R. 1 was about those priorities. Our budget discussion was about our priorities. Today, it's about the future of our republic. You need read no further, Mr. Speaker, than the credit rating agencies telling us that August 2nd is not the date we have to fear. Today is the day that we have to fear, because if we fail to pass this bill, our republic stands in peril. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong support for this rule. I'm grateful to the Budget Committee for bringing forward this resolution, and I ask for a uh, unanimous vote of support uh, as this resolution comes to the floor. Uh, with that, I yield back the balance of my time, and I, I, pardon me, I move the previous question on the resolution. question is on ordering the previous question on the resolution. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Mr. Speaker, on that I ask for the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise.